a very good morning can you hear me a very good morning and warm welcome once again i am geeta program committee co chair for cti's 2024 and i am head of the resource center of mega group of schools nagpur uh, yesterday we had an interesting sessions opening by uh, director of iser Uh, mr bagwat and he talked about how important is learning science and mathematics but how important is also you know enhancing communication skills of uh, our students and uh, another session was by professor su sentence and uh, there we i think we had a lot of teaching strategies and i think there are a lot of takeaways for each one of us from this conference then we had lot of good interactive presentations poster presentations by participants on various topics followed by the presentations by organizations today we have an another exciting day coming up for everybody you all have experienced presentations morning we have a panel uh, coming up now and after this we'll have the ct and inclusion uh, poster presentations i think that is also another very very interesting um event of this conference and the most awaited i think the last one that that will be the uh, workshop by uh, viraj is from iser uh, i isc bangalore and jyoti krishnan uh, from ccl gandhinagar so those will be parallel sessions and i hope there will be a lot of learning today thank you so much over to uh, yeah okay can we have the goa teachers please quickly they'll come quick quick come so they have a a song they want to sing for us so we will just have a song and if all of you know it who were attending their presentations feel free to join them okay okay can we have a round of applause for everybody stand we want a mic stand stand your this way he said you all can sit there standing you can take one more like two three you can uh, combine and get one more money oh that's my own also cool raviya my dear so that ma'am please see the panelists can sit down yes. ma'am please come so that you don't hide the panelist yes uh namaskar ami sage goyatun alelo ahot सर्वात प्रथम मी सोनिया मॅडमना थँक्यू म्हणते कारण मी सकाळी फक्त एकच कॉल केला होता रिक्वेस्ट केली होती की आम्हा मॅडम आम्हाला हे गाणं म्हणायचं आहे कारण का गाणं म्हणायचं आहे कारण ही जी सिटीची सुरुवात झालेली आहे ना त्या गाण्यातूनच झालेली आहे आणि आम्ही ही सगळीजण इकडं तुम्हाला दिसतोय त्या गाण्यामुळेच आम्ही इथे पोचलेलो आहोत आणि ते आम्हाला तुम्हाला हे गाणं म्हणून दाखवायचं आहे आणि मला वाटतं हे गाणं आपणही सर्वांनी आमच्यासोबत म्हणायचं आहे चालेल का क्रमा क्रमा ने आणि टप्प्या टप्प्याने क्रमा क्रमा ने आणि टप्प्या टप्प्याने करतो आम्ही सारे कामे व्यवस्थितपणे करतो आम्ही सारे कामे व्यवस्थितपणे क्रमा क्रमा ने आणि टप्प्या टप्प्याने क्रमा क्रमा ने आणि टप्प्या टप्प्याने करतो आम्ही सारे कामे पद्धत चिरपणे करतो आम्ही सारे कामे पद्धत चिरपणे पण त्याचं इंग्लिश ट्रान्सलेशन पण आहे आपण जॉईन होऊ शकता एव्हरी टाइम यू डू समथिंग डू इट सिस्टमॅटिकली एव्हरी टाइम यू डू समथिंग डू इट सिस्टमॅटिकली स्टेप बाय स्टेप step by step that's doing it systematically step by step step by step that's doing it systematically that's doing it systematically thank you thank you madam thank you so much uh, we have a panel discussion and the panelist the topic is like ai in city city education cost and benefits and we have panelists i think ramanujam will have an introduction of everybody so over to professor ramanujam thank you very much uh, welcome everyone to the
panel discussion. Um, we are starting at uh, quarter past 11, and it's panel is supposed to be for half an hour. But I think you're going to be so either so excited or so worried about AI in education that you may not feel like having lunch anyway. So, <laughs> so we will. <laughs> so, yeah. So we have a, a panel of eminent educators and uh, researchers here to discuss this uh, issue of uh, impact of AI in education, which is probably something all of us are uh, looking to. I don't know whether we are looking forward to how we are looking to, but suddenly it's coming, it's there, and uh, we are thinking about it. Uh, CBSC has put out a uh, syllabus or curriculum for AI in schools, I believe. So uh, it's there, and uh, now the, we are here to talk about its impact on CT education, or I would say even in a broader sense. So we have an excellent panel to discuss these issues. We have Navin Cabra. Uh, I welcome Navin Cabra to the panel. He's a uh, technologist. He's a co-founder and CTO of uh, Relicore.com. He's also a visiting professor at IIT Bombay. And uh, it's a, difficult to list all the things he has been. I think it's probably easier to say what he has not been. But he's importantly a teacher also at Genwise. And uh, so we also have Abha Meghe. Abha is uh, director of the Meghe group of schools known to all the teachers here, and uh, an educator of great experience. Uh, she has looked at uh, various uh, implications of education in many contexts. She talks about three Ds, dedication, determination, and diligence as the principles that drives her. Uh, we have Shanti Vishala. She's a chemistry teacher and former principal of a college. And uh, now she is uh, Deputy Academic Monitoring Officer of the Andhra Pradesh uh, Social Welfare Schools. Welcome, uh, Shanti. And we have uh, Professor Madhavan Mukund of Chennai Mathematical Institute and uh, one of the founders of CS Patshala. And uh, he's, uh, again, an educator, teacher, researcher, known to everybody in many hats. Uh, he also happens to be um, chairman of the curriculum area group of uh, um, implementing national curriculum framework um, in uh, secondary schools, middle and secondary schools. Yeah. Okay. So I think, uh, so we have this uh, eminent panel here to uh, discuss this important issue. We'll open with uh, Abha. Thank you, Ramajan. And uh, I welcome you for the sixth uh, CTI's conference and uh, after a continuous follow-up I'm here to attend this conference and but many a times uh, Sonia and other people they conducted a conference in my school as we have a group of schools so coming to the today's panel discussion uh, we started a city the computational thinking in our school in 2017, a long back. In 2017, when it, uh, it was in August or September, when I have first attended the uh, CT program in uh, Persistent in Nagpur, and uh, I was very impressed with all these, their presentation, and then along with me, Gita was there, and then we started thinking okay, we need something like this in the school, because we are the pioneer in Nagpur and Vidarbha to start the computer education in 1997. There was no computer lab in any of the school in Nagpur that time, when we started a first standard, from the first standard we started a computer education. So we thought okay, we should be pioneer for the city. Because computer is a machine where the child is easily learn how to use it. But what about the thinking? And uh, when I saw this, uh, I attended this presentation and all, I was very impressed and then we have taken a call to immediately implement it in a regular curriculum, whatever, because the teachers and the principal was having a big question mark how to go with these because our ACPs are ready, our lesson plans are ready and uh, with this. But uh, we took this challenge and uh, we uh, merged this computational thinking in mathematics and uh, uh, 
computer uh, syllabus and uh, we uh, started conducting the classes in the way back in 2017 as a pilot. Then definitely we continued that for two more years and then the whole world got the turbulence of COVID and everything changed from classroom to the online. But even that time, it helped us a lot. The AI came by that time into the picture and we used AI for many of the subject to teach uh, online curriculum. With this turbulence, the other turbulence in the education system is 2020, NEP 2020. And again, the thinking started. So, lot of changes happen in the education system in last six, seven years. After COVID, we were not even stable in the schools. So, the implementation of NEP started talking in the school and uh, imposed by the CBSC, this, that, 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 holistic report card hai and uh, um, AI implementation hai, use of ICT was that's the boon of COVID. All teachers, everybody is well versed, use technology in the classroom. Using technology in the classroom, where earlier when we started the CTI, why I'm telling this history? Because it's a thinking process and it's easy for others to implement a computational thinking in the school in very well manner. So, when uh, we started uh, the coming back to the school and the uh, technology use in the classroom and uh, when we started the city so city the teachers thought it is just a coding and it is related to the coding which is completely wrong this is a myth of a teacher even today after a city implemented in the school after the NEP is talking about the city after NEP uh, the 21st century skill is one of skill is the city but still there is a myth ki Compu uh, CT, computational thinking, is coding se related. Hai. Whereas coding is one of the part of CT. But the CT is more talking. I have seen today's presentation there. I purposely sat there uh, for unplugged activities because the CT is a costless where we are developing a thinking skill of a child. This thinking skill is not only related to the coding or the use of technology or the creating uh, artificial intelligence uh, tools for different activities. But this computational thinking requires as a 21st century skill for every child or every citizen of the world. So, it's so important and uh, I feel uh, when I'm looking towards the uh, NEP uh, 2020, so NEP is talk about lot about the technology use in the classroom, but very little about the computational thinking. Whereas the all subject can be integrated with the computational thinking. Coming to the benefits are N number. We can definitely, other panelists must be talking about the benefits of uh, city in the classroom. But when it comes to the challenges, I feel ki the topic which you are given, the challenges, cost and benefit should be there. Because still the teachers are facing the challenges while using the uh, different activities in the classroom. Though there is no cost involved, if really teacher is creative, if really teacher is thinking in that lines, there is no cost of implementing the computational thinking in the classroom of any subject. Then with this cost, the challenges which I am talking, the first challenge, the today's teacher, I, I seen the, but 
this is a very handful of teachers presented a paper here i have a thousand teachers working with me out of thousand definitely a 50 percent teachers are good those who are using uh, different technology those who are using the city in the classroom integrated with different subject but still the 50 percent out of thousand fifty percent that is 500 teachers still struggling how to implement a CT in the classroom. Still they are with the chalk and talk method. Because the teachers are developed their teaching skill through that technology of chalk and talk method. So the major challenge of implementation, the CT in the classroom is a competency of a teacher, a thinking process of a teacher. They should think in that lines where they can implement and they can make every child to think because it is what the teacher thinks definitely it percolates to the last child of the classroom. And if you really want to make a last child of the classroom to think in the different way for the need of 21st century, the teacher should think in that way. So I think the benefits are more. The cost is very less because even today the government te uh, school teachers presented a paper. Even the government school has a computer lab. Even the government school has a different uh, material to teach in the classroom. Few schools are still struggling, but the needs to change a mentality of it's sometimes it is time consuming sometimes it is it needs a thinking process sometimes it is a, a creativity a less creativity of the teacher so these are the challenges which we are facing in city definitely coming time with you peoples the um, cs patshala definitely is always with us I really thank to Sonia and uh, Vipul and uh, Ramanjam for helping us in making this uh, city concept strong in the schools. So um, I hope uh, with this, um, I, I want to uh, just want to give a one example of city as the NEP is talking about the inquiry based learning. And we have implemented the inquiry-based learning in all the classes of standard pre-primary till 10th uh, standard. And the CT helped us in making that inquiry-based classes very effective in the classroom because it has all the component which we are talking in the city, the decomposition, the um, uh, patterns and um, uh, all the uh, communication and all these components are required in the inquiry based classroom. So it is very easy for us to implement the inquiry based classes and inquiry based curriculum in the classroom. Plus the Atal, Atal labs. For the Atal labs, it helps a lot to develop their tinkering skill among the uh, children. So my experience is very good uh, with the um, city, but still the challenges are there and it will be there which we will overcome in very short time. Thank you for giving me a chance. Thanks very much, Abha. Um, so you had talked about thinking and tinkering. Yeah. Um, I don't know how the artificial intelligence uh, impact is going to be on both. I think this is something we would like to hear more on. Um, so let's continue with uh, Shanti from uh, Andhra Pradesh Social Welfare Schools. Before I hand over to her, so just so that uh, I think there may be many people in the audience here who may not know about the Andhra Pradesh Social Welfare Schools or Andhra Pradesh or Telangana State uh, Social Welfare Schools. These were, uh, I would say, a very a tremendous social educational experiment that the country saw in the last uh, 20 years, uh, where uh, the then uh, undivided state of Andhra Pradesh 
started these residential schools for children from the poorest backgrounds of society, bring them together and have uh, a fairly elaborate residential teaching program. And over two decades, this has grown to something remarkable. And uh, I think this just as a word for people to know about. And I think you can find out more about it uh, from people who are here. So Shanti, who has been associated with that. How do you see artificial intelligence coming in? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, from a training at uh, Ahmedabad, I am Ahmedabad, one of the professors, sir, I, sorry, I don't remember the name, told the education process should be follow uh, steps uh, Utsukata, Utsah, Urj and Ullas. The steps should be followed in that manner to create curiosity and enjoyment in education. Uh, I thought uh, how it is possible uh, for every concept, how can we, for one concept, for one month, one uh, concept or in one class we can create that. Uh, but how is it possible for every concept and every class, for uh, a single uh, subject teacher in some schools of government institutions, they should teach multi classes and multi number of subjects or more. Then how is it possible for them? Then. Uh, we have this uh, tremendous change in our education, computational thinking and also AI. These helped uh, uh, teachers a lot to create. Uh, as ma'am has uh, quoted one inquiry method of teaching. Really there is very nice uh, method of teaching but it takes a teacher to write the lesson plan a lot of time. Lot of time is required to write inquiry based lesson plan for any topic. But now AI makes it very easy. Yeah, when, uh, for example, as a chemistry lecturer, I used it to feel very hard to teach Gibbs energy. Uh, it is a very abstract subject and how to deal with. Then uh, recently I came to know about uh, chat GPT. Then I immediately typed what is uh, how to teach Gibbs energy for class 11th students with daily examples are in and around us. Then immediately I got the example that the biomolecular reactions going on in our body is the main energy example of Gibbs energy. These are all not available in the textbook. Even though we refer to many books, general examples which are in applicable mode were not available with us. If we want in depth of this also, we should refer number of books and the time span is very less for all the teachers in, in this uh, very uh, uh, hostile and bustle life of this uh, generation. So, uh, I thought this uh, works a, a lot uh, for the teachers who are enthusiastic and uh, innovate something, t uh, deal, uh, t uh, enjoy uh, t uh, teaching with their students, uh, learning uh, improvements, required learning improvements. They will, they can use this AI uh, and CT in in different manner and uh, in very interesting manner also. And in uh, there, uh, the environment in government sectors is very different from uh, private sectors. And how is the, the, uh, the number of periods they take also. In a government sector, uh, especially in a residential school, there is only one period for a teacher uh, in every day. Only one uh, uh, free period. In that period only she should go to uh, her uh, uh, house and verify whether the house was neat or not, correction of notebooks, preparation of notes, everything she should do or she should carry to house so that she do the for late midnight also. But now this uh, uh, method and uh, this uh, uh, emerging uh, technology will help uh, a lot. And one more thing I have observed was integration of subjects was also very important uh, uh, in while teaching few topics. And that was, uh, for example, in uh, olden days, uh, if you remember, uh, kick, uh, uh, benzene structure was there. Benzene structure was first observed by Kekule. But uh, that was not holding good for many conditions. Then uh, Divar was his friend and he is a physicist. He is a chemist but working on physicist. 
he came for lunch break to uh, to hold his friend but he told we are working on this this is the problem during his travel then immediately kekule has given few structures which included uh, divar has given few structures which were included and benjin ring structure was given uh, finally that means integration of subject is very important similarly while teaching chemistry also i use it to feel uh, first order reaction for plus one students first order reaction there is a differentiation integration and uh, those as a bpc student bpc background student i feel it a bit difficult to deal with it i used to ask my colleague teacher to please ma'am i have forgotten this step i am missing something here because in the textbook we will have skip some steps so they she used to explain me and uh, i i got it but uh, in some institutions we may not have a teacher to guide there we might not have all the uh, uh, comfort also with the other uh, colleague at that time integration of these subjects also we can get from this computational thinking and in our residential pattern we observed uh, uh, one more thing that uh, as our uh, uh, sir shekh sir has given today demonstration uh, along with uh, 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 curricular problems we are having from uh, problems at residential system also uh, as we have expressed the cloth uh, hangers uh, like that solving that also we can use computational thinking it is not restricted to only edu uh, uh, academic field but uh, surrounding us uh, there are many problems which should be solved so that we can move forward for our uh, professional development also that also can be solved using ct that uh, uh, we have uh, understood and we have started implementing and we have seen amazing results in our institutions is an inactiveness was broken and an activeness and a smile on each and every face of teachers and students the it made us very happy and uh, ma'am uh, as we have no at, along with benefits uh, benefits uh, there also the negative side also is there but uh, no, and any change cannot be uh, seen in a night uh, and all the reform should be uh, learn along with changes coming changes and uh, 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 hurdles should be overcome in the in the same way uh, the i feel that when ai and uh, is introduced creativity of uh, us may decrease and uh, assignments if we give they may be a copy paste assignments <laughs> because translation and uh, language learning is very important for any student this during that uh, translation if we give they can check go to chat gpt students are very faster than us they can copy and paste it and they may uh, we can't judge anybody even though they are uh, writing our own we may have a idea that uh, he has seen some other uh, online like that so we should overcome that too, and we should be learning that uh, yeah, these obstacles that creativity for example for a poet also for a when writing poetry rhyming words should be there sometimes we'll not will will be hindered there to write uh, this uh, i am not getting that word word then uh, immediately type 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 and we'll get that but uh, that's not correct <laughs> our minds will be in the beginning of our career well as a class teacher when we are preparing uh, uh, progress report and abstract of the entire class we use it to total marks of telugu english hindi like that and we we'll chaka chak we use it to do now our uh, peer group they are taking madam why you are going like that take calculator from your uh, phone tak 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 they are doing they are one helping each other in that manner <laughs> then they think i thought why why what happened to our mind our mind may become uh, stagnant there uh, and it may not be used to that quick thinking and quick addition like that so i feel that uh, small hindrance is there which should be uh, overcome by all of us that uh, it but uh, as a whole uh, more positives were observed for helping all the teachers Uh, to innovate a new type of teaching new methodologies uh, applying mode can be used very nicely because application mode boils law application mode madam we are reading boils law what is the use they will tell like that <laughs> when some student will ask in textbooks we will get only example a scuba driver 
but we will not get other things. <laughs> but uh, when we go and when we innovate things, we will let our pressure cooker is work on that. And like that we can give number of application modes uh, to a science. Which, have, which you creates interest for children to learn science, apply science, tell uh, uh, to their peer or parents, uneducated parents. It helps a lot and creates interest because nobody is taking science today. Everybody is going to a software doctor, software doctor or a lawyer, high court judge. Um, we will we'll go to those professions they are telling. But uh, I think this will help and create interest for all the teachers and also students and uh, take a positive mood towards science. Thank you all. Thank you very much. So clearly Shanti's uh, enthusiasm and optimism is infectious. And uh, so I now ask Naveen to uh, so before I start, let me ask, how many of you have used ChatGPT or Copilot or Gemini in the last 10 days? 10 days? Ten last 10 days. days, okay. Most of you have used it, that's uh, uh, good. How many have you used, have you used it for most of the last 10 days, almost every day? Okay, nobody, very few people, right? Um, the reason seems to be, uh, I mean, are you using it primarily for work? Yes, okay. So I think uh, that is the first uh, obstacle, right? Don't think of this as a tool just for work. It is a tool for everything, okay? The more you use it, the more you will discover chat GPTs. And by the way, I use the word chat GPT, but I'm using it to mean chat GPT or Claude or Gemini or Copilot. All of them are similar, okay? Generative AI, yeah. Uh, so um, use it for everything and you will learn more and more things about it. You will learn interesting ways of using it and they will help you in using it in education, right? Because what ma'am said was that the students will not get the most benefit of chat GPT unless the teachers first get that benefit and then that will uh, flow to them right so i want to uh, point out a few interesting things about uh, chat gpt that uh, not everyone might be aware of right first of all um, you can use it on your phone you don't have to use it on a computer only uh, second is that you can talk to it in your own language marathi bolta yeto tyala tutki putki marathi asel tari hi content sangla asta you can talk to it you don't have to type that is a problem many people have i don't want to type so much uh, but you can talk to it directly and it listens and it understands you can write things on a piece of paper take a photo and ask it to answer the question it will understand the question and it will answer it right you can take a student's answer written on a sheet of paper and take a photo and ask it questions about that answer it will be able to answer it right all of these things are possible with uh, chat GPT. If you have a spreadsheet in Excel, you can give the entire spreadsheet to chat GPT and you can ask it to do calculations with it. You can ask it to do visualizations with it. You can ask it to show charts and graphs based on the data uh, in there. All of these things, right? So chat GPT is much more powerful than most uh, people realize. But I want to talk about a few more specific ways in which it can make even education more interesting. First of all, Shanti ma'am, excellent examples of uh, Gibbs free energy and all of uh, Boyle's law, right? Do that. Ask Chat GPT for how can I get real life examples that are relevant to my students. You know, if you are near a fishing village, uh, you can ask it for examples from fishing, it will give you good examples from fishing. You ask it for examples in farming, it will give you examples in farming. All of these uh, it can do. More than that, uh, let's say NEP has come up with what inquiry-based learning, right? So you can ask it to create a lesson plan saying, I want an inquiry-based learning lesson plan. But you can even say that I want you to be a teacher who is uh, teaching a student using inquiry-based learning. And uh, I don't want you to give that student answers directly. I want you to help the student figure out things on their own. And then this, with this prompt, you give it to a student and ChatGPT will pretend to be a teacher and will walk the student 
through an entire session, right? Uh, another thing that one of a teacher I know uh, uses is that after a particular concept has been explained to the students, uh, he tells the students, okay, he gives them something that is called a Socratic uh, teacher, okay? Uh, and in that, what he has told ChatGPT is that pretend to be a Socratic teacher, which is ask the students to explain that concept, then ask, uh, pretend to be not understand and ask some follow up question or ask them some complicated thing that to check whether they really understood some corner cases. Three times in a row, you should ask, try to ask questions that will trip them up. And then at the end of that, do a summary of what they have understood, what they have not understood and what they need to learn further, right? Now, this is something that most teachers, you would do this, some of these things automatically if you were teaching a student, but you don't realize that I could use ChatGPT to do this, right? Uh, there's a lot of things that you just tell ChatGPT. Think of ChatGPT as a new teacher who has just joined, doesn't have that much experience like you do, but is very, very knowledgeable on all subjects. And then talk to it as if you are talking to that teacher and ChatGPT will be able to do a whole lot of things for you, okay? A few more things uh, you can, um, you know, Tell ChatGPT that I want my students to get practice in this particular topic. So please ask them questions, start with easy questions, and then if they get the answer correct, go for more difficult questions. If they get the answer wrong, go for easier questions, and it will adapt, and they can have a good 10 minutes of adaptive questions from uh, ChatGPT, which ChatGPT understands the answers, okay? Um, Another thing you can do is that to explain some concept, it is very difficult in abstract and to do it on a board, but with ChatGPT, you can easily build simulations. If you are teaching probability and dice, you can say, okay, ChatGPT, write for me a little program in which children can throw dice and 100 times, and it will show them how many times this happened, how many times that happened. Pretty much any concept you can think of. You can ask ChatGPT to write a little simulation. And as teachers, you all know that if students use a simulation, they will understand that concept far better than just by theory, right? And you are not programmers. You can't build these simulations yourself. But ChatGPT is, especially for fairly simple things. Uh, it does an excellent job. And finally, um, you know, it can do translations, keep that in mind. So same thing, if you have students who are not that comfortable with English, teach them something in English, then give them a translation of the same thing in their language so they can look at it, they can understand it in two different languages, it goes in their heads much more clearly, okay? But also as uh, Ma'am said, there are problems, we need to be careful uh, about the issues. So I want to name a few problems. One is that chat GPT can make mistakes quite often. So you have to be careful. You have to always check its work. You have to uh, check that whatever has been produced uh, is correct, right? You can use chat GPT to speed up your work. You cannot use chat GPT to, to replace yourself. It is not that good, right? Uh, and same thing, when you have used, uh, I mean, children have used chat GPT, you should go and inspect what they have done, what ChatGPT has told them to make sure that ChatGPT didn't lie to them. It does that very convincingly. Uh, second thing is that um, you have to be careful. There are certain things that students are supposed to practice on their own to build the skills. Okay, There are certain things that they just have to understand. And for that understanding, you can use ChatGPT. But for example, if they're supposed to do two-digit multiplication, uh, and the whole point of doing that is that you build that skill, you understand that, you internalize it. Now, if they keep using a calculator for that, they're not going to learn that. So they are forced, they should be forced to do it themselves. Same thing is going to repeat in all subjects now. You don't want ChatGPT to become a crutch so that they can't walk on their own, right? So you have to distinguish which uses of ChatGPT are good for the student and which uses are bad. But don't assume 
that all uses are bad okay they are going to go out into a world where everybody is going to be using chat gpt they have to become experts not only in physics but in use of chat gpt both of those things are required okay and finally um, i think you know the thing to keep in mind is that chat gpt is going to make learning easy but learning should not be easy okay because if it is easy they are not going to learn anything it has to be hard that's the only way it goes in their uh, brain as teachers a lot of your job until now used to be teaching them how to do this how to do that i think the importance of that is going to reduce because chat gpt can easily teach them how to do things what chat gpt cannot do and what is going to become the most important part of your job is to teach them what to learn and why you have to learn it those that is going to be your increasingly important job you have to start working on that uh, from now on right so um, that's all i had to say thank you thanks very much navin can i take a one minute okay sure just uh, add on to uh, sir's this thing i have some a uh, few lines that ai is about providing computers with the ability to think like human while computational thinking is about improving the problem solving capabilities capability of human by leveraging the way of computer think when it solves the problem so the ai cannot rightly said by uh, sir the ai is always a tool for the teacher it never replaced a teacher thank you very much madhu uh thanks sir so i think there's nothing left for me to say so uh which is what i <laughs> so i uh, so just to set some context so uh although i have been involved with uh, ct uh, i have very limited experience of teaching ct directly at school level but uh, if you heard two year two years ago you know that i teach ct at uh, undergraduate level so we have a course uh, which we teach at iit madras and um, so i think echoing what various people have said before i think uh, we have to see two sides of i guess uh, generative ai uh, the one side which is the positive side that we would like to uh, work with i think in this context is how to use it to make teaching more effective and learning more effective the other side is usually associated with assessment which is that it can be as navin was saying uh, an easy way for students to solve problems without doing any work and uh, therefore the purpose of assessment which is to check whether a student has understood or not uh, gets subverted by the fact that this tool is available uh, so the second part i think is a hard problem uh, because it involves really uh, rephrasing somehow the entire assessment process in a way that it can uh, overcome maybe the advantages of 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 uh, generative ai and this is a subject in itself and uh, viraj is there and he is a person who is uh, uh, so we are in in different forums looking at this at at different levels and i think that's a tough problem to address separately so let's uh, go back to the first question which is how do you uh, what is its uh, positive use in the classroom from the teacher's perspective and i think as has been already said before i think the main advantage of having such a tool is that it allows you to create a lot of variations or search for new contexts for concepts where you would struggle to do them all on your own so one thing is that i mean remember that chat gpt is itself implicitly a repository of everything that everybody else in the world has done right it's not really thinking for itself so in a sense you have access to uh, a body of knowledge which you may not explicitly be able to search through using a search engine because you don't know what to look for maybe or you don't know where it is but chat gpt has internalized it because it has been fed everything that everybody has ever put on the internet and so on so therefore if you ask it to do things or solve variations of a problem or find things it is actually pretty good at doing it and there and as navin said the problem is it might make a mistake but there hopefully as a teacher you are able to a 
refine what it has done and B, spot these mistakes and fix them. But in terms of being able to do this day in and day out and have a continuous stream of, of new challenges in some sense to throw at students is possibly a way to address also this assessment issue. So concretely, this morning, just for fun, uh, I was uh, playing with ChatGPT on Bebra's task. So Bebra's, some of you know, uh, so is a computational thinking challenge. And uh, as some of you also know, it's very hard to set problems for this, which are of a good quality, which are not too difficult, which are suitably connected to computation, which have a good story, which are short, and so on. So one strategy is, of course, to take existing Bebra's tasks and see if you can adapt them. The other problem is that sometimes there are good tasks, but they are not culturally relevant. You might be talking about reindeer or snow or something, and it may not make sense for applying in an Indian context. So I just, uh, like Naveen said, you can uh, feed it a sheet of paper. So I took a screenshot of a Webras task and said, give me the same thing in an Indian context. It was very happy to do that. And it supplied me with a solution. And it supplied me with the algorithm which was underlying the task that this is vertex cover. And it was, uh, to put it mildly, it was pretty shocking. Okay, <laughs> What it can do with one paragraph of text, one image, and one single sentence question. So it is, I mean, I, I haven't verified whether it got it right. Okay, But the point is that it can do this. And it can do this in many contexts. So I think this is one really uh, immensely useful tool for any, I mean, I think the the hardest thing for any, from my perspective at least, for any educator is to continuously come up with new questions to ask. Because every, you have to assume that every question you have already asked has been, you know, put down in some question bank and somebody has solved it and somebody will, I mean, it's not that every student will, will do it, but some people will get an unfair advantage and you don't want that. So from this creativity process, so the question of creativity, so I think it can be a tool for creativity. So creating new problems with some assistance and generating even possibly different questions for different students is possible. So this is one thing. The other thing is going back to this computational thinking course I talked about. So there, it's a little bit more unlike the CT that we have been uh, seeing at school level. It is a little more directly linked to getting students to a programming stage. So we would. So the intention of that course at IIT Madras is to prepare them to be effective programmers when they learn Python in the next. Uh, term, but we somehow this doesn't work. Okay, so uh, people do very well in CT and they are failing Python. Okay, so there's still some problem in this uh, linkage, and they they are, they can do the CT and they can't do the Python. So it is very clear to me that there are two parts to learning programming, which are independently hard. One is to frame the problem using CT in terms of the algorithm that you want to do. And the second is to get it to run. Right? And there are a lot of students who seem to be really inhibited by that second step. They're not able to you know, go get past the compiler errors and the unexpected behaviors and, and all that. And if you combine the two, which is typically the case in an introductory programming course, you teach them the logical uh, approach to solving problems and the syntactic approach to writing a program and debugging it, it just jumbles up this confusion in their mind. So that's why we did the CT plus uh, Python. And then there is the complaint, which is that the CT course asks them to write these solutions in some kind of pseudo code. And how do they validate it? Then there was a suggestion that we write an interpreter for the pseudo code, but then you are back to square one because then that interpreter will not pass all pseudo code and then some will fail for reasons which are mysterious and so on. But uh, what we are currently looking at, GV and I are currently looking at, is using actually ChatGPT to generate Python from the pseudocode. Right? So you can give them at least the satisfaction of running their pseudocode, seeing if it's working. And hopefully that will give them some confidence going forward when they actually have to write Python code, that they can actually start with pseudocode, maybe use ChatGPT and write the Python code. And hopefully, eventually, they'll figure out that it's more efficient to write the Python themselves. But I'm saying that you can use this in different ways to bridge these gaps which appear to be very uh, clear. So, so these are two specific things that I'm personally looking forward to investigating. One is this thing of creating 
variants or modifying Webras does. And the other part is this integrating the CT course with the Python course in a more uh, tight manner. But I'm sure there are a million other things that people could do. So I'll stop there. Thanks very much. I thank all the panelists for uh, this very brief um, presentations. Um, we started at uh, you know quarter past 11, and this is like half time. And it's a wonderful thing to have the panelists speak until half time. So I think it looks like the four AI team is leading two goals to one at half time <laughs> right now. But uh, so before we open it up, I thought, OK, the other team also should have its attack on the goal. So I thought, uh, let me raise a couple of questions. Because even when we talk about the kind of advantages that something like, I mean, we are only talking about Gen AI tools, generally generative AI tools. Of course, there is a vast range out there of other kind of AI tools. I mean, we have seen how much GeoGebra has been referred to here, right? So when you bring in AI with other kind of tools, the potential is, in fact, in education is a lot more. But having said that, uh, if, we heard, if we go back to the kind of examples that we heard from Shanti and Naveen and Madhavan, especially with the kind of use of uh, um, how you might use GPT, what kind of teachers, teacher model are we talking about, right? So, uh, and also what kind of learner model are we talking about? So if, as far as children are, I mean, as far as students are concerned in general, I think we are talking about at all age here, ages here. Um, I think we should make some difference about maybe students at the university, students at uh, secondary school, and students at primary school, right? Because the, the patterns of learning development are very different. And now can the, can the tools bring in that? I mean, after all, our system looks at it in stages. Teachers are trained at different stages. We look at it differently. Can tools bring in that element very importantly? Now, if we are talking about uh, you know, learners learning, right? Now, of course, whatever I learn, I learn from books, I learn from teachers, I learn from school, I learn by doing. It's not that I learned it all myself. However, you know, whatever constructivist I could be, what construction do I do, right? I put it all together. But bringing in um, GPT into the equation is a bit problematic. How do I know what I know, <laughs> right? How do I distinguish between things that just came to me through something and some things that I reasoned out. It's problematic enough, but as these things accumulate, how do I question? I mean, it's easy to say that maybe I should always check facts and so on. Ah, but what fact checking can I actually do, right? So that's about facts, but even about techniques, about many things. Similarly with the teacher, I'm a bit worried about what kind of teacher we are assuming here, right? I mean, the burden of creativity every day, the burden of, uh, you know, using these things. I mean, checking students is hard enough. Now you're asking me to check tools also. <laughs> tools certified by big corporations, right? I mean, you're asking me to do all sorts of things. I am happy to come, you know, to class, routinely teach my linear equations and go home. Now, suddenly the routine comforting part you are asking GPT to do, and I am su supposed to do the difficult part. And am I equipped for that? And what is the kind of teachers that we are talking about? It's true that, so I mean, it's not surprising that Shanti's examples were from a university teacher, right? In some sense, if you are talking about Gibbs model of free energy, and if you are talking about it, certain assurance, you are coming to the content with a great deal of assurance. And you're only talking about, I mean, you're not going to listen to GPT on the chemistry. You have uh, uh, clearly assigned role for GPT to tell me some Indian examples or something like that, right? I am not going to let you tell me more. Now, is that something that we can take all along? You know, and school education, how is that going to be? So I would say that even where we see advantages, if we don't think of it as a one-shot thing, if we think of this as something that happens year through, what does it do to our minds, to our abilities, and so on? So I would like to, you know, that suggest that there are probably many more pedagogical problems, educational, systemic issues for us to think about. But on the other hand, in advantages, I also want to 
mention one thing where the education system has been terrible at, which is inclusion. In terms of breaking all kinds of inclusion barriers, disability, you know, the education system has been pathetic. So AI tools or digital tools, already you can see, are bringing ways of breaking entry barriers. Language barriers is one thing that Naveen mentioned. And we come in a country which is deeply riven by various kinds of division, caste, so social classes, economic classes. There are all kinds of entry barriers into education. And digital tools are already showing you that they can put tools in the hands of people. right? So maybe AI tools can help with uh, uh, many of these issues where we have not, uh, you know, the education system has not been uh, very good at all anywhere in the world. So probably there are more po potential and more possibilities, especially in children with disabilities of various kinds. Okay, so uh, with that I would like to, uh, I mean I think the panelists should respond to not just these, but to, uh, unless somebody wants to urgently respond to any of these, I would like to throw open the discussion to the audience and uh, let's have questions, maybe take a few and uh, then we can go around responding. Yeah. Um, Maybe one of the mics. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, I am Dr. Kiran. I am from uh, Bangalore, uh, Vidyashilp University. Uh, <coughs> I have two things, sir. Uh, one minute, I just want to share my experience, and uh, one, I have a question. <coughs> I, I teach. Uh, computational thinking for undergraduate students, economics, psychology, marketing, finance students. <coughs> I have a different uh, experience over there. Like, I don't teach coding. I teach to entire two credits for uh, only to make them think how to solve problem using uh, <coughs> computers. Um, my, like, as uh, Mukund sir was telling, uh, <coughs> Chat GPT, we use Chat GPT. We don't use to uh, identify the problem or to solve the problem. What we do, <coughs> we identify the problem, we solve the problem, we write the algorithm there. Then we, like, we once we thought, we'll just feed it into the Chat GPT and we'll see whether we'll get the code. So we wrote the algorithm and we gave algorithm to the Chat GPT. It was able to give us uh, code, like we asked code in Python, code in. Uh, Java code in C, it was able to give us a code. So in that uh, sense, we were able to, we told them that coding is not important, but uh, solving the problem is important. <laughs> that was my experience with uh, my student. Second thing, like with respect to AI, sir, I just had a question. Um, I, I believe that uh, problem solving, entire thing around, which is around the computational thinking is the problem solving. Anything, anything we see in the outside world is a problem. We, we need to look at how to solve the problem using a computer. <coughs> so main important thing is identifying the pattern. So uh, what my experience is, neither AI nor uh, anything will be able to help us to identify the pattern. It's us, we need to identify the pattern so that it can be used for uh, computation. Right? What my question here is that, AI, is that only one extension for our computational thinking? Like uh, we are identifying the pattern. AI may be like when we are trying to solve the problem, we may require a computer to uh, <coughs> learn the pattern. That is, that is the only extension uh, we'll be having, sir, or uh, <coughs> that is the only difference, I guess. Now we are, uh, now we are identifying, trying to identify the pattern. If you want, AI to solve the problem, we may require uh, uh, AI to identify the pattern. need to learn the pattern, what we teach and use that pattern to uh, learn how to solve the problem. So that, that's the question, sir. Maybe we can take a few questions and then answer. Okay. That corner, that corner. That corner? And then there. Hello, am I audible? Uh, my question is to Professor Mukund. Uh, so I took your course, and uh, I'm team against AI. Uh, so my question is, AI is known to hallucinate, and especially generative AI is known to hallucinate. And there was a paper last month, I think, a funnily written paper. 
talking about these hallucinations. Oh, uh, there was a funnily written paper last month talking about these hallucinations. So, in a sense, these hallucinations are limitations of computational thinking, right? So, at least at an undergraduate level, for the course you teach, is introducing these limitations of computational thinking a good idea to dissuade students from using these tools? Right here in the center. I think you had a question, right? Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Uh, Abha Men say uh, about the uh, adult taking lab. Uh, we are very looking forward for uh, adult taking lab. I am Gujarat, sir. In uh, Gujarat, we had a training about the adult taking lab. We had told us that I think all the school of excellence will give the school of adult taking lab. Uh, I think it's been a half year. Today, there is no place where we don't see the adult taking lab. So, I just wanted to ask what's going on in the process. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, right here, huh? Excuse me. Here. Her hand has been up first. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my question is from Naveen, sir. Uh, the question is, sir, that don't you, I want your view on it, in it that don't you think that before implementing that uh, this AI generated tools like chat GPT into our edu education system, we should have a rule book for the same. Because AI generated response are perspective based, right? As we know that AI, Jet, Chat, GPT, other tools use the existing data, and those existing data is fed by the Western uh, browsers like uh, Google and all, and and they are made by the Western countries. Countries, right? So what the uh, response from we get from those Chat, GPT, and all is there is the perspective that uh, Western countries look at it. Suppose uh, we are uh, teaching our students for the uh, suppose UPSC and all, and there we have to write the perspective-based answers. Right. One day what I did is that uh, I, in a chat GPT, I scrolled down several questions. The question is that how do you look the, uh, uh, the heritage or culture of the uh, Western countries with, I, I was comparing with India. The world that I invented over is that for Indian, they have uses the world that invaded, looted. But when we talk about the, in the ch chat GPT, when we, when we talk about the heritage of the other Western countries, it talks about the flourishing, glorious. So it, don't you think it makes a negative impact over the children when they use the chat GPT that they have a that, that our country is loosening on the way it is? And I think that is the reason why that chat GPT is not much in course in the China, right? Because they are not, because their perspective is different. They don't want Western, Western media to set a perspective for the same country, same education system. So don't we think that our country should have a regulation for, of, on the AI before it should be implemented on our education system? Okay. That's my question. Uh, there are several hands and we'll get to them. But I would like to ha have the panel respond before we continue. But every four questions. Yeah, the first question would like to no. Maybe you want, no, no, there is different things have okay. come. We don't have to go in I, that order. Okay, I'll answer the Atal question. So Atal, a portal is not at all open right whenever the atal portal opens then you have to apply for that and then they allot the this thing uh, the atal uh, tinkering lab but from last one and a half year the atal portal is closed whatever they have distributed the labs they are working with that only okay so that's the answer the second is uh, shall I, uh, the question from the you that AI is giving a negative impact when you compare the other countries with the India. See, um, in my opinion, the, uh, we have to develop a creators and not only the consumers. And to develop a creators, definitely teaching a computational thinking in the classroom, I'm very positive, will develop a creator and not only the consumers and then when we will be a, a developer then this problem will definitely solve will be rule the country, uh, world um, so let me answer your questions there were three different questions if i understand right uh, one is that we should have some regulation around ai and the answer is no Okay, because AI is so complicated, nobody understands it. And if we put regulations too early, 
we might end up killing all of innovation we might end up killing the golden goose uh, we might end up preventing india from using ai in the best possible ways whereas other countries race forward okay there is a theory that the ottoman empire the ottoman empire by the way they banned printing okay because they were afraid i mean same reasons that you gave for ai with those reasons they banned printing because printing can be misused in this way and what is the impact it is having on our brain and all of that and there is a theory that the entire ottoman empire collapsed because of that okay i'm not saying that is entirely true but that sort of thing is possible so regulation very early uh, can actually be very uh, largely negative so related to that the question was that before we introduce ai in schools shouldn't there be some uh, rules and guidelines and so on and the answer is should there be rules absolutely yes should there be guidelines absolutely yes there are a lot of problems with ai all the issues you pointed out about bias are there okay the problem is that this is so new and it is changing so fast that there are no rules there are no experts there nobody knows what the right thing is uh, if we wait until all of those rules are in place it will be too late okay everyone else will have raced ahead so i think we have to do the best with what is possible we have to introduce it and then we have to have good teachers in charge who look to see what problems are being caused and deal with those problems you all are experts your entire career is about looking for problems and solving those problems right so we should trust our teachers a little more to deal with this properly and the third thing was that yeah ai china is not using chat gpt because of whatever xyz right the problem is that china is a rich country and they can afford to develop their own ai systems we are not we can't right so we have to use chat gpt yes so there was one specific question about hallucination and computational thinking so i think uh, so the question was uh, does hallucination so hallucination is the term for these mistakes that chat gpt makes is it a case that computational thinking has shortcomings and students should be uh made aware of that so i would argue actually that is the other way around that actually the problem with hallucination is that chat gpt does not think computationally chat gpt is really a memory uh, memorize and repeat device right it's just that you have memorized enough things so the majority of things that you have memorized come out right but if you hit that minority which is random you will come out with something which is uh, completely you know wrong or partially wrong or something so hallucination is really a lack of computational thinking rather than a, a cause of caused by computational thinking so in fact i would say the other way around and anyway what i am suggesting as is not that uh, i mean i was only talking from the perspective of the student validating their existing thing to see whether it works or not so i completely agree that if you just blindly create code and don't validate it and use it then you are at risk of running something which is doing something completely different from what you think it is without having any uh, understanding of that but uh, i don't think that these two are uh, linked in the way you said yeah. shanti do you would you like to respond to anything or okay um, there is one thing that uh, dr kiran raised that i wanted to and so it is about ai and problem solving and computational thinking now there is one phrase which has not uh, come up at all in all this and that's machine learning right so a um, whole lot of generative ai that many of these things that we are talking about are built on artificial neural networks deep superficial whatever but these are machine learning. i think it, this is the spirit of madhavan's remark about uh these are uh, not really computational there is no thinking in that sense well it shows symptoms of these now there is a difference between mistakes and hallucination and i think this is probably the spirit of that remark here as well because you know when something is very bizarre okay you know it's wrong <laughs> maybe but when things something sounds right <laughs> right and the scary thing about this is that it's not that it's mistaken it sounds right right then you need to be super alert to know what and this comes from its uh, 
the fact that these are machine learning based this is very important also if you take classical ai systems and their problem solving if you have worked with classical ai systems the way they make mistakes you can understand the mistakes you can go back and do so this is classical this, in fact all the thing the kind of problem solving that people have been talking about in, in ct and this conference and everywhere and so on is classical <laughs> i'm sorry to say you know it's only computer scientists can who can call something classical when it is for the last 20 years or something like that but i mean this is the true true thing because machine learning is a very different creature right and uh, the sort of stuff that so we are mixing both and it, we we are going to mix both i mean people are talk i mean now we started with generative ai and we have picked up that discussion but look at something like alpha geometry that has come out few months ago now this is a hybrid system it uses classical ai problem solving learning techniques and machine learning and uh, you know alpha geometry paper shows that uh, this can solve math olympiad problems at silver medal level and they are saying okay we have reached silver medal geometry problems gold medal seems to be hard okay but here the point is it's not even doing generative ai kind of stuff it is using ml it is using classical algorithms and this and this is what is going to happen as we go along with more ai tools right so some part of it comes from data analysis so kiran was asking about is ai an extension of ct right now they are not even recognizably close right then I mean, these are completely different paradigms the not ai machine learning right machine learning based approaches and how they work using deep learning techniques and how they produce is completely different but and that's currently so now, the kind of problem solving that when all these things combine i don't know i think we are very far off from even understanding many of these things and the other problem is also that we put put a lot of stuff into the term computational thinking this is also problematic it just somebody push something and we are like, you know it's like you know everything is going into that bucket it's not correct at all all problem solving is not computational thinking right any social scientist who is solving an economic problem doesn't mean necessarily that they are doing computational thinking either right so we are putting too much of all these things into one bucket but certainly in terms of access to data these systems have access to data in an unparalleled fashion right humanity i don't think has any parallel at all to think of problem solving where your data base that you work with is of this order so i don't think we can compare with any of our you know experiences gathered over whatever centuries of you know human social problem solving that we have got so this is also a bit of a problem we don't know how to understand the way the finally these systems work so when it comes to education these things come the thing about regulation is that our means of socio legislative or even economic um, uh, means of control right are very very slow glacier slow compared to the advent of these technologies and i think this is why navin is saying that so but on the other hand it seems clear that we want all these now it's one thing to say that finally it's the teacher who has control but it scares me as a teacher right you are demanding more and more from me as a teacher right why should the teacher bear the burden of uh, all these things society should do something so it is in that sense i think the plea is coming that okay experts you guys come up with some systems some regulation do something don't leave it in my hands right so i would like to say that i think perhaps there will be all these kind of demands coming from there so uh, just to respond to the last part uh, yes i mean all the a whole bunch of people not just experts in gen ai but experts in education experts in uh, sociology all of them are working on these issues they are trying to come up with rules uh, and when those rules happen uh, they will uh, get communicated hopefully but you cannot wait for that to happen you have to get started and your experiences will help the experts come up with rules one good afternoon panel uh, my question is uh, how to evaluate 
AI generated responses. For example, suppose we all are students and you all are teachers. All of us have used chat GPT and respond to assignments. So which parameters we should consider in uh, case of all AI generated responses? So uh, when we were talking about teachers uh, being assisted by AI, another thought came into my mind is when we move teaching to online, right? So the, a lot of the um, approaches and pedagogy had to become very explicit in an online mode, which was very implicit in a teacher when she walked into a classroom. So. Um, want to explore actually uh, the what uh, generative AI can do for things like, for example, an example I could give is my online courses. I had a lot of text material. I used AI to create scripts uh, to make it easy to create videos, uh, right? So I don't have to spend so much time developing the script for content which I had already created. So uh, I'm wondering for especially a multimodal or multiple representations of uh, things that teachers already have in them, they could help, uh, you know, have this AI as a tool too. And the second thing is administrative, right? We are always talking about the administrative workload of a teacher and actually coming in the way of the actual teaching. Can we think of you know, AI as a sorry, AI as as a tool to help in these matters. Um, so I wanted to go back to that dialogue a little bit about uh, regulations and stuff. I want to add an ounce of paranoia, like both as a parent and as a teacher. Uh, so when COVID broke out, uh, my son was only in grade three. Hmm? Uh, the problems I thought I will have to contend with when he's a teenager, I had to start thinking right then. So though it was awesome that the teachers were using YouTube videos, nothing would stop him from clicking on another link that would then come up, right? There was no fixed window within which you could operate, right? The world was opened out in unexpected ways, right? And the semblance of control that I thought as a parent was became a myth. And that is true for teaching as well, even as a teacher. So when we say we shouldn't put in regulations, otherwise we will lose out in the race, I'm not sure whom we are talking about, right? Like the level of exposure that the kids are exposed to today. If we are talking about, you said we should think beyond academia as well. And this is very critical now. It is no longer just academics that you're exposed to when you're uh, exposed to these kind of tools. So the chatbots that are out there, the kind of information your child is exposed to, and then your child is convinced that this is the truth, and you as a parent are not telling me the truth. Now that becomes a very difficult space to be in. So there has to be something somebody does to put in a window there, right? And not say, open out the world to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just hand over to you. That was actually a great question. <coughs> Actually, I would be quoting uh, what uh, Naveen sir said. So he said, making learning easy doesn't necessarily make learning effective. So bringing in AI is going to make learning easy. Uh, something called as productive struggle is going to go out of the window. So how are we as teachers going to deal with it? That's my question. All right. Uh, let me start with the easier question first. <laughs> so, uh, actually, I mean, if you let students just use chat GPT in any way, then they are going to get lazy and they're going to use it to make learning easy. What we have to do, but you can always create variations. You can create a prompt which tells chat GPT that don't make it easy on the student. For example, Khan Academy has now integrated chat GPT into it. It's called Khan Amigo. And one of the things they spent six months to train the AI that don't give the answers to the students directly, make the students struggle, okay? So that's something we have to work on, right? So that leads into your point, which is that absolutely we shouldn't have a free for all. Absolutely there have to be regulations. So when I said, uh, I should clarify, when I said that we shouldn't regulate it, what I meant was government shouldn't regulate it. Government is a terrible, uh, 
<laughs> I mean, but government is terrible at regulating things too early. Okay, so government should only step in much, much later when it is very, very clear what is the right regulation. But until then, absolutely, there should be regulation by parents, regulation by teachers, regulation by schools, except that it should not be something that is imposed from top. Right? There should be guidelines, there should be experts uh, giving talks like this, right? Like we are telling everyone that chat GPT hallucinates, chat GPT makes mistakes, so you have to check your work. Things like that should permeate through society. And But then ultimately every parent should be able to take their own decision as to what is right. Every teacher should be allowed to do that. Every school should be allowed to come up with their rules for what makes sense to them. And we should really have a democracy where, you know, this school has a set of regulations, this school has a different set of regulations, and over time we see which works out better, and only when things have settled down, then government comes in and makes a regulation that everybody is forced to follow. Uh, just uh, the question which Madam raised about the administrative work which the teacher has to do, definitely for that the ERP helped a lot for the uh, schools in making when we, I was a teacher uh, 30 years back so I used to do the uh, um, uh, result analysis and the mark sheets and everything manual which is uh, now it's very easy with this technology along with that uh, many a times um, even even the chat GPT help us in the um, doing this administrative work like giving the um, remark to every child. Uh, you just put the um, few words and you get the remark, which a teacher has not need to think of each and every child. Again, uh, we tried with the uh, graphical analysis of uh, uh, results and all. And when it comes to the many schools at my level, I'm telling you how I'm doing. The, uh, definitely it's easy to put the marks in the chat GPT and I get uh, all comparative uh, statements of uh, subject because Savita is sitting here and he, she helped me in a lot uh, doing all these exercises. So that's from my side what I am using. Apart from that, many others are there. I hope the experts can speak. Shanti. Ma'am, regarding your question, for uh, uh, this will help a lot, ma'am, because uh, uh, to prepare a question paper, teacher takes a lot of time, according to blueprint, knowledge-based, replication, mode of questions, this type of marks like that. Now it takes very, in a few seconds, you can prepare the question paper. Uh, and uh, one more thing is, uh, according to the level of the student also, you can prepare the question paper. And the mode of questions, uh, multiple choice questions, blanks, uh, essay type questions, like that, uh, with a small instruction, you can prepare question papers. In, uh, for, uh, in a government sector, for encouraging future learners, what we used to do is we give separate question paper for them so that they get, they score much marks and uh, they get more encouragement to move forward uh, rather than giving the same question paper. Uh, for that, uh, teacher feels very hard to prepare a number of question papers with all the classes she go. But here, this will help a, a lot to prepare question papers as ma'am said, result analysis. You can also see individual student analysis also. Whether the student has developed going in a uh, 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 right way or he is uh, coming back in a learning session. And you can also identify the gap regarding the answers he has given. Where the gap was, whether there is a, a memory gap or understanding the concept, that also you can uh, see uh, while uh, you utilizing that. I think it will help. But there is one more uh, problem is because uh, I feel I don't know whether it's correct or not. When uh, the uh, landline was there, we used it to remember hundreds of numbers, so 20, 30 of numbers of our parents, relatives, everybody. But when our smartphone has came, now I don't remember. I remember only my husband's number, not my, even my son's number also. <laughs> Uh, in the same way, when uh, the reference was ready with all of us, I think in the uh, long run, the reference books to be referred by the teachers may descend. 
I hope that there is a lot because all will not go in a positive mode. All will not go that we should learn, we should encourage. We sh will not have a same mindset every time. We'll think, ah, there, let's this time let us go like this. We'll improve ourselves next time. We may think like that, and our uh, movement uh, towards knowledge may decrease because of this available, easy available resource. That uh, I am uh, doubtful about that. Thank you. So I want to go back to the question about evaluating and, uh, I mean, X or whatever, checking whether something has been AI generated and question about learning. So I think the two are linked because in a sense, the idea of learning is a subjective statement, right? So when do you say somebody has learned something? You say it by evaluating them. So you cannot separate your understanding of what it means to learn something with what it means to express your learning. And that is what we typically do through assessment. And as you rightly said, I don't think actually there is an effective way in our current mode of assessment of understanding whether the answer that somebody generates has been written through understanding or through looking up chat GPT. So therefore, we need to change that. Uh, so that is, as I said, you know, something which is a, a separate exercise in itself, which is, and I think if you can do that, then it will in some sense address this issue because the learning that you get, the ease of learning which appears to be there, which is to be able to answer the questions which are currently set in an assessment will not be the way that you will assess and therefore it will not be as uh, obviously an easy route to learning as we think it is. So I think there is a kind of link between these two claims. I, I don't have an answer to this, but I think this is important. Now. There is a related thing which, I mean, so I was going to talk about this phone number thing myself, but there's another uh, analogy which I would like to give, which is that, see, when you now want them to express their learning, as Naveen said, you cannot educate a child of today to not use these tools. It's as unthinkable as asking them not to use a computer or not to use a calculator and so on. It will be a hindrance, right? So therefore, their expression of their learning has to factor in the fact that they are allowed to use these tools and still you have to get them to show that, right? So this is like driving a car, right? So for a long time, people would say that if you can't change gears without stalling, then you don't have to but with an automatic transmission, that problem goes away. But still, you have to drive on the road and not hit people and not kill people and obey the rules. And that is really what driving is about, right? So the point is that you can, this most of driving a car and man, you know managing a vehicle and doing it safely and effectively is not to do with the mechanics of changing gears. But all the emphasis prior to having an automatic transmission is on how to you know shift gears smoothly and not stall and not. Uh, create mechanical problems. So in the same way, I'm saying that just as calculators have kind of said that we, it is not so important to do a manual calculation and not make mistakes, right? The problem is to understand what you're calculating and whether you validate or they got the right answer. In the same way, I think we will need to tune assessment in that way under the assumption that a tool is going to be used. How can you still do it? I don't have an answer, but I'm saying that that has to be the way. There is no point, I think, in wasting any time on trying to do this filtering. Because the more you filter, the more people will find ways to beat that filter, and it's just a never-ending you know, cycle of uh, this cat and mouse. So I think you just have to find radically different ways of structuring the assessment, which will hopefully get a better uh, understanding of what learning means. So as, as I mentioned, so so Viraj is there, and we are doing this. This I mean, there is a separate exercise where we are trying to understand how to. I mean, not at the school level right now, but more at a university level. But what is the way in which we can rethink? I mean, we have all recently. I mean, a couple of years ago, AICT has gone through a whole revision of the curriculum, and now that whole revision is suspect, <laughs> right? Because it is. It is a curriculum which is based on an old style of understanding how students have access to material. So now our current thing is, can we, those same people who revise the curriculum, can they anticipate, think, and restructure the curriculum in a way that is effective? That might be a first step, but I think every subject will have to deal with this. Some subjects it is more obvious that you have a problem where you have to evaluate people on things where they write essays and things like that. You know, in, in 
problems where it is more that you have to construct something is probably harder to do it through chat GPT. So I think it is, it is a subject wise, it will vary, but I think this problem has to be addressed. And when I say you, I mean we. I would like to add one point to some of these because uh, it's not as if educationists, education experts, policy makers, you know, government, I mean, they say stakeholders, whatever, right? All these uh, people holding their stakes and sit, sit together and resolve this issue because there is something else that is involved and those are, that is a market. It's the corporations. So it's true that government is horrible at regulation, but the record of corporations is pathetic, <laughs> right? So do I distrust the government and give control to the market and to these, especially the big corporations, which have become so big that they are almost governments in themselves now. In fact, they are unable to regulate anything they want to regulate within their own companies. That is the status with Google and Microsoft and companies like that. They have become so big that they can't. So. Now, the point is with AI tools and these things that we are talking about, um, that's where we are, right? While the social legislative process are remarkably slow, and for, come on, three pedagogues to sit and agree on a pedagogy technique, that will take forever. I mean, and uh, now you're going to say that all this kind of discussions will go on and we'll come up with some guidelines that Google will listen to. Uh, I think we are talking something. So I think the problem is at the pace of this and whom to trust. Now, when we talk about administration, it's certainly too, true that, uh, you know, digital tools, the use of digital tools, I think makes a big difference in school administration. But we are not talking about digital tools here. We are talking about AI tools. I think that's why I'm saying, please don't dump these things together. GeoGebra is not an AI tool when you're talking about, so similarly, when you're talking about using Excel sheets and so on, and what a remarkable improvement it has made to school administration. Remember that if you are using Let's say, I, mean, I don't want to simply say Google Doc, but you know, so Google Classroom, Google for your administration, right? But the moment you have Google coupled with AI tools, right? Realize that you're talking about data about your students, right? It's, you know, when everything is going into that particular system, you know, assignments are submitted, evaluated, everything is going through that thing. It's all data. It's all data, and now we have to think about words like privacy, which we didn't talk about here. There are a whole lot of other issues come. And remember that for AI, especially the machine learning thing, thrives on data, right? So the, in fact, the interest of many of these in the education system is not so much from pedagogic purposes at all, but as data, right? data as learners, data as teachers, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying it in a doom, doomsday sense, because it's valuable data, because, I mean, come on, what is the, you, know, you go to education system, you want to look at, you know, learners' patterns in India in local context, what papers exist? At that time, educators start saying, oh, there is a great positive, there's a gap in research, there is no research, and so on, and data is going to come now. We can use all that. So this is precisely the problem. There are definite, definitely in terms of prospects, these tools bring in many things. In terms of data analysis, the potential for that and use in education, also we have many new things come in and completely new tools. I mean, once again, I just want to, you know, because GeoGebra, I understand, so I'm taking, but think of other digital tools also. When tools like GeoGebra are empowered with, I'm using the word empowered in this sense, right? With data analysis, they're capable of giving you a lot more than what they can do today. So the potential of AI tools is really like that. But at the same time, there is always this question about what do we, how do we understand the teacher's role? How do we understand the learner's role? And how learners are putting all this together in their heads, especially as Kanchana pointed out, it also opens up the world in a way. We are used to controlled pedagogic experiments, right? We think of a classroom as our space, right? Me, my children, and the book or whatever, right? Suddenly, internet already opens it out. And so schools say, oh, no internet in classroom. You would say that, right? So you have the pretense that, therefore, you shut the windows, right? So no internet. Our children uh, cannot use mobile phones in classroom, right? But AI tools are something else, right? It brings in the world in a different way in, in pedagogy. So we need to be a lot more careful about this. And uh, 
yeah i know that a lot more people have a lot more things to say on this but uh, you know it's also time for lunch right especially you know groucho marx said when the problems of the world seem insurmountable it's time for lunch <laughs> okay so thank you very much yeah thank you so much anyhow we have to use ai <laughs> yeah can we have all uh, volunteers here here or we'll, outside we'll thank the panel yeah i'm so yeah yes. <laughs> thank you so much madhavan santi nabin ma'am aba and ramanujan i mean uh, all the mentions there were various thoughts coming up and uh, how do we empower and as like that how do we empower like geo zebra tool with ai and how do we really look at policies rules and uh, let's see how how it it, it will help a teaching community and society to have effective and better life thank you so much thank you Here? just all the pict volunteers yeah all pict volunteers and um, before we break for a lunch we'll have a group photograph yeah, so all of you yeah everybody just stay inside just here we just want to acknowledge the support provided by all our volunteers so we just want to get them on stage yeah. and everybody wait we'll take a group photograph at the steps and then proceed for lunch okay just 2 minutes certificate you want yeah <laughs> <laughs> and thank you thank you to all participants those who are online we just have a quick lunch give us two minutes they were working on very hard for the last two minutes come on all of come on all all of you all all are waiting outside you call them yeah they come so thank you so much thank you for everything <laughs> children students they were really cooperative we right really yeah come on is come 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 fast pi yeah it was <laughs> so the, this was the group from ggis and we have another team who helped us is pcti college <laughs> pi city and cs patshala team so quickly where do we meet run 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 thank you thank you very much and tell everybody to wait at the yeah and yeah yeah the whole team like will go outside for a photograph and then lunch thank you so much yeah do we have water bottles yesterday i kept your and went to the fridge i mean it's my Yesterday, no. Like I left it here and went. I missed it. And when I came back, it was so. I thought that if I can get one, it's the 